What's up guys? I thought I'd give you an update on the SP140. It's been a little while. Um, I'm sorry about the mic setup. It's it's really janky. I'm uh, getting a new mic set up. But uh, hopefully this works out well. If not, I'll just have to record it on the ground, do some voiceover. Maybe I will. Uh, I tried yesterday. It didn't work very well at all. It sounded pretty bad. And uh, just some uh, no audio in the whole video. So uh, I'm out here again today. It's uh, a little bit windier. That's why I'm up at uh, 1103 feet. Um, a little bit smoother than down low. I'm just cruising around right now. I'm pretty much parked, which is uh, pretty funny. But uh, I'm on my Apco Hybrid. Um, it's a medium. Um, it's kind of fun. Fun wing to mess around with. Uh, I thought I'd try it out and get some uh, efficiency numbers on it and stuff like that. So uh, first things first, uh, you guys are probably wondering why haven't I uh, launched the SD140 yet or had more uh, information out on it. And we've been working on uh, tweaking the design a little bit. I don't always say that, but uh, I can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel, which is why I'm making this video on kind of a final uh, impromptu kind of, uh, you know, off the cuff update. But again, I'm making this video because I do see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I thought I'd talk through some of the questions you guys probably have. Uh, this is future editing Paul, past flying Paul, didn't do a very good job of explaining stuff clearly and the mic setup was uh, pretty rough, so I'm just going to try to answer some of the questions here, and you don't have to listen to my janky mic setup. So the first question, and it's a question I get a lot, is when is the SP140 going to be out? And now that I finally see light at the end of the tunnel as far as uh, component choice, design, and manufacturing, I feel confident in saying that pre-orders will be available before the end of the month, and uh, we'll update the website and have all the specs and uh, more information on there and see numbers and specs like thrust, cost, operating cost per hour, um, all that good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. We will be sending out updates to everybody on the waitlist for the SP140. So if you want an update or you want more information about the SP140 once it's available and you'll get the latest updates from us. So now that we've gone over when it's going to become available, um, a lot of people are wondering, you know, why, why did it take so much longer than projected? I originally had the goal of releasing it in the springtime so everyone could fly all summer long. But there's a few things I wasn't happy with, and I think it's really important to nail it on the first try. So that's why we've kind of delayed it a little bit longer. And I'll go over the main points. Um, the three main points are reliability, cost, and uh, overall manufacturing. And those are kind of all intermingled in a way. But I'll break down each one for you. So I'll start with cost. It's probably the easiest to understand and explain. Um, of course, if you can't afford the unit, then you can't enjoy all the benefits of it. And uh, electrics specifically very costly to manufacture. Uh, if I was to manufacture a gas motor, it'd be thousands of dollars cheaper to do. You could definitely do it for way less than electric. And uh, I think that's partly why a lot of the other units on the market are, you know, 10, 12 grand, the electric units that, that is. And the gas units are, you know, uh, seven, eight grand. And the price point I really wanted to shoot for was kind of the lower mid range of gas units, 7,500. So I really wanted to make sure I could stay, you know, right in that sweet spot um, and keep it as low as humanly possible. Now, a lot of uh, business minded people say the price point of 6,900 is uh, probably too low for my margins. The goal isn't to sell a handful of them. Um, I want to have a lot of units available and make it sort of like uh, the, the Honda of electric units or just paramotors in general. Something that's reliable, you have spare parts for, and is easy to fly and simple to fly. And when something's that simple to fly, it's, you get the most enjoyment out of it. And you end up flying way more because you're not worried about the little maintenance and the little headaches that uh, an un unreliable motor or unit would uh, bring along with it. So that's why uh, reliability is huge and cost is huge. So that's partly why it's taken longer. Um, getting the reliability where it needs to be, I think is really important. The I think the reliability needs to be much, much greater than a gas motors, um, especially because it can, one, it can be, um, but two, it's a, uh, it's still new in people's eyes. Um, we do see like a lot more electric stuff nowadays, but uh, it's still relatively new and I think it can be tainted like uh, the overall image of electric paramotors can be tainted pretty easily so I think nailing the reliability and the cost is crucial and I think all it really takes is a few problems even if 
it's far less problems than they s someone would have with their their gas unit. Um, they're kind of used to their gas unit maybe having problems here and there, and you know, rebuilding every you know, fifty hundred hours. And with electric, I think it doesn't take a lot for. All it takes is you know one person to kind of have a problem, and they tell their friends, and they're like, oh yeah, I I knew it. Electric was bad from the beginning. That's, you know, it's maybe another ten years. I think people kind of have a preconceived notion of what they think it is, and it doesn't take a lot to um, justify their their notions. So I think making sure there's very, very few problems, like near 100% reliability, even if it doesn't matter if it's a ton more reliable than a gas motor, um, it doesn't take a lot of bad news to get spread uh, easily. So that's kind of why I'd rather take the extra time and make sure it's done right and aside from costs and manufacturing I think that's a, a really important factor making sure all the specs are uh, really good like the same as gas or even better and the same with the price point the same as gas or even better in most circumstances because if the cost is higher than uh, gas units I don't think the adoption will be very good and you kind of can see that with uh, other electric units that are on the market and same thing with reliability it needs to be you know, significantly better for people to make the switch over to electric. So I'm just going to talk about some of the changes we made since uh, the last update as far as like hardware and stuff like that goes. The major changes we've made is uh, we've had to design a new ESC. Um, we've gone through multiple different motor uh, combinations and prop combinations. So probably, I don't know, 12, 15 different motor combinations, uh, unique motor combinations, and probably another 10 different prop combinations on top of that and um, just cross testing all of those to try to get the most efficient and the most reliable setup. With this new ESC we have designed, you now have the flexibility of choosing any paramotor prop you want to fly with. So there's not a prop too big or too beefy. Um, this setup will accommodate it. So if you're say a 400, 500 pound guy and you want to foot launch or probably even trike, then you could. Or if yeah, you're just tandem triking something along those lines, you can have the thrust you need and the reliability just just the same. The prop I'm running in the video, I, I ground tested and I was getting 23 kilowatts of power out of it, which is equivalent to like near 200 pounds of thrust, so way more than most anybody would ever need. It's kind of scary those those kind of thrust numbers, but it's it's really fun to have that option you can kind of grow with it if you want more power later on or you wanted to start slapping it on your trike or something like that you can and the same kind of future proofing design has gone into the the new battery we're using before the old battery was a cnc aluminum case it was a really a really cool design it fit really tight and snugly and it was really compact and energy dense but the, the there's a few problems with that one I was the only person that could manufacture it when I actually took it to other places to try to get them to manufacture it. They just had way too hard of a time um, and the manufacturing process was uh, too complicated for them. So uh, with the new battery design, it's a, a lot simpler and which means the cost is much less because the, the old battery design took me probably about 10, 12 hours to make each one and that's you know that can really add up especially making hundreds of units um, it's just not something I could really do at scale so the battery had to uh, undergo a redesign and with the redesign I kind of opted for 2170 cells versus 18650 cells even though they are less energy dense the, the 2170 cells as far as what they have on the market right now the market is definitely gonna have different cells available in the future so when they do come out um, it's an easy upgrade for people and makes manufacturing a seamless for us. So I hope that kind of helps answer the question of, you know, why it wasn't available sooner. It's just those three main points, you know, cost, reliability, and manufacturing. And those are all just uh, really important to just nail down. I'd rather take the time and do it right so I don't have a bunch of wasted time and money um, and make sure it's successful. All right, I'm going to let Flying Paul take it back over and wrap it up. We are going to do a soft release, um, then I'll do a more official launch video later on, but uh, for all the, those people that have been, you know, wanting to put in their pre-orders, um, I not finally feel comfortable uh, doing that, so I'm going to work on the website, kind of redo it, 
uh, add more specs in there so you guys can see that when you do uh, put your pre-order in. Um, as far as timelines, um, I'm looking to have that pre-orders open at the, the end, before the end of the month. And we will send out emails to people on the email list and the wait list. And if you guys don't want to order right now or put the pre-order in, because it, it is a pre-order, um, we don't have units in stock ready to ship, then I'll just wait. Uh, wait for some reviews, wait for stuff like that. That's not a big deal at all, but uh, we do appreciate everyone who backs us, essentially. That is uh, much appreciated. Makes, uh, makes my life a lot easier and uh, helps keep the cost down. So I think that's uh, most of the points I wanted to try to get to. The sun has set, and uh, we've been flying for about 43 minutes so far, and uh, I don't want to do too much low flying because it is bumpy, so I'm just going to head it back for land. Uh, but uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you guys the unit a little bit, at least to kind of do a video fl while flying it, kind of uh, show you guys the setup. But uh, yeah, this is it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.